Obviously, uh, the Super Bowl came and went without anything really unfortunate happening to anybody, unless you were a Patriots fan. Um, or during halftime, if you actually have good taste in music and, and show business production, that was pretty disappointing as well here. But the good news is, uh, at least for the moment, we seem to have bluffed the false flag plotters down. I'm sure they're still out there thinking, what can they do that would be believed as coming from Iran? And the answer is, of course, absolutely nothing here. But that is not stopping the planners because uh, the Brookings Institute is uh, still out there. You know, saying that a horrific provocation and some kind of Tehran sponsored 9 11 is needed to trigger an Iran invasion. And this is actually a policy paper from back in 2009. And um, uh, basically, the paper was titled Which Path to Persia Options for a New American Strategy Toward Iran? And it's just basically it's laying out. We got to find a way to make it look like it's their fault. So now we're actually finding official documents from uh, the policy setters of the nation saying, yeah, we're going to have a false flag. We're going to make make it look like Iran is the bad people, and so forth and so on. The provocations continue. You've probably seen on the corporate news that Obama has put more sanctions on Iran. They froze Iranian government and central bank assets in the United States of America. Must have been a whole, what, $8.18 still left inside the United States after all those other sanctions. But by golly, Obama's going to show them what for and... Uh, freeze the assets and just say, come on, you want to do something about it? You want a piece of me? Huh? Come on, bomb something! And the Iranians are saying, no. It's like the old joke about the the, the masochist and the sadist, and the masochist is saying, beat me, beat me, and the sadist goes, no. So anyway, I mean, over at World Net Day, we've seen this all over the place, but the most recent and egregious example uh, was over on World Net Daily. And it's all variations on a theme of, we got to kill Iran because they want to kill the Jews. We have to kill them. There'll be a new Holocaust. They hate the Jews. They're going to kill all the Jews. Okay, and if you believe that one, I've got some of Saddam's weapons of mass destruction to, uh, to sell you. Now, <clears throat> two reasons why this is a load of bovine excrement. First of all, forget what Israel's hired prostitutes are claiming Iran wants to do. And look at what Iran has done. Since Iran became an Islamic Republic in 1979, and actually for a couple of centuries before that, they have not tried to invade and conquer anyone, not once. They're kind of happy where they are. They just want to do what they do, and they want to be left alone, which I can certainly understand that myself. Now, Israel and the United States cannot make the same claim. Israel's constantly attacking other countries, constantly trying to steal other people's land. Same thing with the United States of America. They're getting ready to go into Syria. Oh, yes, we've got to have regime change. We've got to get rid of the guy we don't like and put in a puppet who will do what we tell him to do and starve those people in order to feed the bankers, like is happening all over Europe right now. And... As Iraq demonstrated, the U.S. and Israel will make up any fairy tale they think will actually work on you to trick you to throwing your children onto the bayonets of the designated target. So fool me once, blah, 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 blah. Now, the, here's the situation. If Iran wanted to kill Jews, they could start with the Jews who live in Iran. There are a lot of Jews who live in Iran, and they're very happy there. They're very comfortable there. They don't feel like they're in danger. In fact, not too long ago, Israel offered the Iranian Jews a financial incentive to emigrate to Israel. And the Jews in Iran said, no, we're happy here. We've got good friends, good neighbors. We've got a good life. You know, everybody's kind of got a very accepting attitude about other religions, and we get along fine here. I mean, obviously, Muslims in Israel don't get that same deal. You know, a lot of them, you know, they're, they're not treated well at all. But if Iran really wanted to kill the Jews, wouldn't they start with the ones inside their own borders? So, there you go. It's, it's just not happening. It's, they're going to go on saying whatever they think will get you to go along with this, and the only way we can stop it is we must all continue to stand up and say, Bull biscuits! When we hear these claims that Iran is the bad people and Iran has a death star and Iran is doing hideous, you know, uh, genetic experiments on Bigfoot and the Loch Ness Monster and they're going to make something that swims up through your toilet and bites you on the bum unless we go kill them first. 
And you have to have the courage to stand up to the warmongers and say, you guys are just full of it. You really are. You are just so full of it. I would laugh at you if you weren't blowing people's children to bloody bits in the pursuit of imperishable glory or whatever it is you think you're up to this week. Anyway, so far, you know, despite the provocations, I- Iran is not biting. By the way, little interesting story. Apparently when Israel went in and started blowing up those Iranian scientists, they were using bombs manufactured in the United States of America. Another one of these little false flag things that Israel is so famous for. You know, like they did down in Egypt, blow up a whole bunch of American and British uh, resources down there in Egypt, plant evidence to frame the Egyptians. That one didn't work because one of the bombers got caught. And apparently it didn't work in Iran because the Iranians are not stupid people. They know how Israel plays these games. So, <clears throat> anyway, over uh, in Syria, they're, you know, they're playing the same game they played in Libya. Send in a bunch of agent provocateurs to kick up a fuss. The Syrian government reacts to the provocations. And everybody says, oh, look at those Iranian governments killing their own people. How dare they? And meanwhile, here in the United States of America, apparently the cops shot and killed some other kid. They kicked down the wrong door to the wrong apartment. The guy didn't know what was going on, tried to defend himself, and the the cops shot and killed him. Okay, so the U.S. government's killing their own. And so you can't have it both ways. If you're calling for Assad to step down because his government is killing innocent Syrians, then I call on Barack Obama to step down because our government's killing innocent Americans. And Barack Obama isn't going to listen to me any more than Assad is going to listen to Barack Obama. And so once again, Barack Obama's going, we have to go to war. What do you mean, we? You know, when your daughters are on the front line with the rifles and the camo, then it's we. Okay? But don't sit there in that Oval Office with the Secret Service protecting you and military bases all around you and and send other people's children off to be blown to bloody bits on the other side of the planet and say, we. Because it's not we. It's your war and our kids. We. Now, in order to express their displeasure to Syria, you know, you must leave so we can put in a new puppet, uh, the U.S. has closed their Syrian embassy and pulled out their staff, which is diplomatic speak for, we don't like you anymore. You're of no more use to us. We're going to kill you all and put in somebody into the government who is of use. Uh, By the way, I, I wanted to mention this. I think I mentioned it briefly last week, but I wanted to mention it again. There's a movie called Green Zone. It's starting to make its way uh, onto cable TV. It's a pay-per-view, I think, is where... Yeah, it's a pay-per-view. And uh, it's going to be in the DVD stores. It sort of came and went in the theaters. It didn't get a lot of press. And when you see it, you will understand why. But this is a movie you must see. It's the, the, uh, the only real honest film treatment I have seen of the, the, the fact that the U.S. government basically lied about Saddam's weapons of mass destruction. And it's, uh, it's a very well-made movie, and it should have done a lot better than it did. But I know the corporate media basically turned on it and said, oh, no, 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 you want to go see movies that say the wars are right and just and holy and all American soldiers are wonderful, swell guys whose you know, feces are not odoriferous. You know, and, and those are the movies you should go see. And you know, these other movies you know, about uh, you know, the green zone and about how the government basically lies us into wars and puts puppet rulers in uh, to control other countries. You know, you don't want to see movies like that. That stuff will keep you up at night, and so will this movie. But it's definitely a movie I recommend that you see. It's called The Green Zone, and uh, it is, you know, somebody had a lot of courage to make this one and act in it, and, you know, congratulations. I think it should get an Academy Award. It won't. But it should. We'll be right back after these commercials. And Aloha, America. Welcome back to the show. We're talking about the push to war. And as you probably heard on the news break, um, Syria's Abbas and uh, Hezbollah's Mashal have agreed to form a unity government. And, of course, this has thrown Israel into an absolute total panic. Not that it's really any of their business. It's not their countries. Okay, But, you know, for the last 60 years, Israel has survived by 
tricking Arab leaders into f- factionalizing and distrusting each other and, and, uh, and always constantly fighting each other, divide and conquer. And every time uh, an Arab leader steps up and says, look, we, can't we all get along? Israel just has a complete panic attack and they start a war someplace. It's the reason uh, the, the, uh, Israel ordered the United States to send your kids into smash up Iraq because Saddam Hussein was very, very popular. He had a secular government and the Arab world was saying, you know, we could kind of sort of form a large Arab, you know, unified republic around Iraq. Well, Iraq's gone now. Now they're looking at Iran. And that's the reason Israel has told the United States to throw your kids' lives away on smashing up Iran, because Israel's cultural, societal paranoia will never be happy until the biggest Arab nation in the region has a population of no more than maybe 56. And even then, Israel will not be able to sleep at night because paranoia is a mental illness. It's not really based on the real world. But that's what's going on. And so Israel's out there expressing its displeasure that, you know, uh, Syria and Hezbollah out of Lebanon are forming a unity government. It's not their business, really. And it is the expression of Israel's cultural arrogance that they think it's up to them to say who can and cannot be friends. I mean, Israel's always talking about an existential threat. Doesn't that threat go away if everybody around you is all friendly and not fighting each other? And they're looking at ways to maybe build a peaceful world? Unfortunately, some people, like, well, Israel and the United States government, they depend on keeping other nations constantly warring with each other to keep them weak and distracted. And, of course, the banks love it. Yes, we'll loan you more money for bombs. We'll loan you money for bullets. It'll be so much fun. We're going to make so much money. So, uh, basically, Netanyahu has gone down to to Abbas in Syria and said, you can either have a friendship with Hamas or peace with Israel. Now, (laughs) that's a stupid deal, because in 60 years, Israel hasn't made peace with anybody. In fact, the last time they had a ceasefire uh, agreement was with, with Hamas, was back in 2008. It lasted exactly six months, and then Israel broke it. On November 4th, 2008, they attacked into Gaza without warning, without provocation, killed a bunch of Hamas officials. And so everybody in the region knows every time Netanyahu is offering peace, there's nothing there. Israel doesn't want peace. They can't survive peace. Because of the way their country is set up. They have to have wars. They have to have enemies outside. The only way they can rule their people is to have this constant state of, yeah, they're coming to get you. You know. And uh, and so if Abbas is going to choose between a a peaceful relationship with Hamas and the illusion of peace with Israel, of course he's going to go with Hamas. And so Netanyahu is already calling up the U.S. government. In fact, he's going to be over here, I think it's in March talking to APAC, and he's going to be banging on the White House doors and saying, you get those Syrians for us. That's your job. You know, that's what you get for saving all the Jews by, by, by stopping Hitler in World War II. It's, it's like a kitten. You pick it up, you're not allowed to put it back down. So Israel is in a bit of a panic because the Arab nations around Israel have come to understand the way this game is played, the way Israel plays the game. And they're starting to ignore the provocations, the way Iran has ignored the fact that Israel used U.S.-supplied bombs to assassinate the leaders. And they're going to say, all right, yeah, we know that's Israel. No big deal. That's what they do. And they're starting to basically form larger and larger unity governments. And Israel is in a panic because having spent the last 60 years constantly attacking their Arab neighbors... They're terrified of an Arab unity government coalescing at this particular point in history where the United States that they have been parasitizing on for over half a century is on the verge of collapse. They've sucked out all the juices and the vitamins and the money and the weapons and the, and the soldiers that, that they can. And the nation is starting to crumple up like a, you know, you leave a grape on the shelf for a few too many days and it starts getting wrinkly and uh, brown and everything. We've got a big helicopter flying overhead right now. I hope they like this show. What can I tell you here? All right, so, you know, Israel's in a panic, and now they're going to say, forget Iran for next week. You know, uh, you've got to get it Syria today. 